so to speak. You know, even in even in Abraham, when Abraham, when the Lord came to Abraham, Abraham was about seventy-five years old when the Lord first came to Abraham and told him that he gonna be the father of many nations. And 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 he was ninety-nine years old when he came to him and told him that Sarah will have a baby. Mm -hmm. For the promise gonna be to your seed. You were serving, you know. And he was a hundred in the eyes of the Lord. So you see how important it is to wait upon God's timing? Yeah. Because it's God that, that, that's working this out. He, you know, other people might, you know, I, I'll be alone with me to think once upon a time, Lord, you know, get, I'm a, I had that Abraham mentality, you know. At this age, how long can I wait? But God knows our future. He knows how long we're going to live. You know what I'm saying? He know how he got everything in his hand. He's in control. All the things we have to do to do have faith. And even when a woman is conceived with a baby, it's not even though no matter how happy she is that she got pregnant, that's still a waiting time. It don't come. She don't get that baby. She got pregnant today, and her baby pop out tomorrow. To have a complete, pretty, healthy baby, it's going to take nine months of waiting. So there's a waiting time. I would say, he that waited on the Lord said, and he lay strength, and said, not if I can do you. Walk and not faint, run and not be weary. So we have to wait on the Lord. Hebrews 6 and 15 said that Abraham, after he had endured patiently, he received the promise. You got to patiently wait on what it is that you ask for. You can't expect to happen overnight all the time. Don't get me wrong, God is a, right now God when you have to be. But we got to have patience. It's, it's, it's essential that we have patience. You no? Know? And let patience have a perfect work the Bible says in the Jerry Lord. But anyway, and I want to talk about something else right quick before we go to prayer. This is important. How many know that God is also a God of order? God of order. Yeah. God of order. Therefore, whatever it is that you want from the Lord, for instance, we come to church and we watch other folk, their positions, or what they do in the church, this or that, or how they act, or whatever it is. But we need to come to church and focus on one thing. What does the Lord have for me? What is it he got for, for me or for, for me to do? For instance, I don't believe, I know for a fact everybody that comes through that door that's a born again believer in the Lord have a position in the church. That's right. I believe that in my heart. And if you have a position, it should be it should be very detrimental to you to find out what that position is. That's right. You should want to know what your place is. Yeah. Because you want to find your place to stay in your place. You want to be in your position. You know what I'm saying? Right. How do you know you're going to be blessed? I'm where God wants you to be. I know that. When you walk where God wants you to be, you're going to be blessed. But you've got to know your place. And sometimes you have to come in, you know, don't get me wrong, you come to the church hugging and greeting and all that, and certain time is good. That's good, that's great, that's part of the church family. But then there's a time in the church, you come in, it's time to sit down and be quiet and listen and hear and receive. Because there come a time when you got to come seeking. And when you come seeking, it's good to come in and greet your brother and sister, and then get yourself placed because I'm expecting, I'm in search of something. I'm wanting something from the Lord. And did you know in order to get your find your place in the Lord that you got to be conditioned? There's a place you got to be spiritually and mentally in the Lord in order to receive your position, your place, to hear the Lord's word, to hear the Lord's voice. You got to be conditioned. Anybody will just hear the God's voice. You got to be conditioned. And that comes with obeying his word. 
being obedient. Being humble. Being eager to grow in the Lord. Hungry. He that thirsts, he that hungry and thirsts after righteousness shall be faithful. But you got to want this faith. It ain't gonna just fall on you. Well, I think of surrender as the word. Yes, surrender is a good word. When surrender you're saved, all you're, yourself. You're, when you're saved, you're surrendering yourself. Yes. And, uh, but see, don't, don't just don't surrender your body as far as, you know, I'm showing up. Surrender your whole self, mentally and physically. You know, you've got to have your mind stay upon heavenly things. Keep your mind stayed up on Jesus. Your mind stayed on the things of righteous stuff. You want to go forth in the Lord. You're pressing toward the mark of the high calling of God. I don't like to think you that word striving. You know what I'm saying? I like to press. This is a press. You press your way into the things of God. You know? I've been working on surrendering my spirit. Um, you know what I'm saying? Along with the, along with the self, what you think? Self in itself. Self. You know. You, you, you have to surrender self, your self. That is always self. You. That means, you know, like you said, to be totally focused on your his purpose for me being here. Why? And for me to remain teachable. You know, because sometimes I get in God's way. We all, I, I we all have to I, I mean, I and I don't mean to. I really don't mean. You know how I used to. I'd pray about something and then try to get up and get it, do it myself. And uh, see, that's, that's, that, that I, I have to work on. Hmm. Well, even if you should put it in God's hand, if you're going, you already got the plan yourself, and you're going to go by your plan. Isn't that you know, awful, though? Uh, well, I say we all create God in our image. Yeah. The God that you serve is, uh, well, I like this is what he says. I'm going to take that. I don't like that. I'm throwing it away. So you're basically creating your own God. But it's, everybody well, well, is going well, to do that. But if your version of what God is matches the scriptures, you're in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> but you keep in the ears of the ears in the scriptures that line up with the word of God. And what you're not keeping don't line up, but then you're not creating on the right there. You are making sure that nobody else ain't trying to shoot on you. So, you know, that's that's a good thing. I myself, plus other people that I have known. Uh -huh. So I'm not just pointing fingers at anybody because I've done it myself, okay? Um the Lord knows, we might say out of our mouth, I'm surrendering this to you, whatever it is we're asking about. What's your will about this, Father? Or leave me, Holy Spirit. Okay, but the Lord knows when our mind is already made up. Okay, and sometimes I've gone to God with an already made up mind, and God himself won't change our mind. He will not invade that. So once we've made up our mind, we're going to do something, and and you got to watch where you're thinking because you usually where you're thinking is where your feet's going to go. I mean, I think all of us in here probably have had that experience once or twice in our life. But you know, I definitely have. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not you know Miss Holy Roller over here. I'm trying to say, if people really knew my testimony, Brother Ron, they would not believe where God has brought me out of to where I am today. You know, you so you know something, sister. Some people can, but I could because I know what God can do. Yeah, you there know. you go. But I'm just saying, though, yeah. people, a lot of women, especially that I counsel with and stuff through abuse shelters and things like that, you know, they'll be like, "Oh, sister Donnie, you don't know nothing about where I've been, how I am, and what I've done." I said. <laughs> I ain't gonna be telling you all the details, but I know. No, it just sort of, you know, it sort of just do something to your spirit when I do know. Make somebody understand and feel and see what you had done for you, where you're from, and they can't comprehend it. They can't comprehend it. You know. Now they look at me like I'm this, you know, got it all together, holy roller, you know. And Miss Donna, you you don't know nothing about that. You know, you've been that way since you were one year old, right? No. 
<laughs> no, I have not. But I mean, I praise God for what he has done and the grace and mercy of God that he showed in my life because it <clears throat> is why I am where I am today in his kingdom. But I'm just saying, I haven't always been here. Right. And I know what it's like to have my mind made up. Now, if we go to the Lord long enough and keep on surrendering, keep on surrendering, and don't just run out here and do whatever comes to our head that we think we want to do or should do, God will eventually help us to figure it out. But I'm just saying, a lot of times we come to the Lord with our mind made up. Right, and that's, 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 where, and that's the way it is. That's, and that's where the Lord will let you run out there. And when you, when you, when you come to us, like you said, your mind's already made up, even though you say, I'm bringing this to the Lord, but you already got like you said, sister, you already got it placed in your mind. You know, yeah. You know, yeah. Give it to him. See, mm -hmm. the Lord allow you to go on and see see your way through. Yeah. You see, be when you clash. And, and we kind of He's there to pick us up. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll if we ain't dead, show you if you're willing to. <laughs> if we ain't dead, he'll <laughs> pick us up. Right. Yeah. They destroy you. The, yeah. way, the way you take it, they destroy you all yeah. together. You know what I'm saying, yeah. If you are called on the name of the Lord in the process. He'll, he'll take you back. Take That's you back. my story. That's well, my our, story. Our desires will change. Uh, I, I was talking to Sunday school class, Bethlehem Baptist, about six or eight months ago, maybe longer. Uh, we were talking to, when I was a teenager, I can't imagine how stupid I was. Oh, a beer, I'll have a beer, oh, that beer, oh, that tastes good. And, and you think back on it and say, that is some nasty stuff. <laughs> and they call it an acquired taste. Where was my head at? <laughs> yep. Amen. But yeah, no, yeah, the mercy and the grace of God yeah. picks us up and he makes a way out. The thing is, the Lord knows what we're going to do before we do. Oh, yes, okay. So when we screw up and we go out there in the devil's territory and we say, well, you know, I'm mad at God because he didn't answer my prayers. And we go out there and we do whatever we think we want to do. You know, and we think, oh, well, I don't really care what God thinks because, you know, after all, you know, he didn't answer my prayers, so I ain't caring what he thinks. Well, you go on and you go do that. The Lord already goes ahead of you and makes a way out. He makes a way of escape. We have to take it. It's still our will always involved. Till Jesus comes, our will's involved. But I'm just sharing part of my testimony here, and I'm just saying, I know for a fact, the Lord went ahead of me and my choices I made, and he made a way out, but I had to take it. Amen? Amen. I had to take it. Number three, five, and six say, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Amen. That's good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Our job is to trust in the Lord. Yeah. You know? And he knows. Back to where we started from again, that is wait. We got to learn how to wait for the Lord. We got to quit being so instantaneous. You know what I'm saying? Right. We got to have it right now, right here. You know, That's things right. will fall apart. Everything will go wild about. But God's got everything under control. We got to believe. He has an eternal plan. Yeah. 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 If he yeah. told Abraham at 75, I'm going to make you a make good father of many nations. And he was 99 years old before you know, the promise was kept. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, he did some waiting. That's and believing right. in the process. Right, that's right. And if we say we are servants of the Lord, that we are God's children, we get his workmanship, then while we're waiting, we ought to do what? Serve. Serve. That's what yeah, that I that word. Like that yeah. 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 yeah, while we're it's waiting. It's an action serve. word. It's an action yeah. word. Yeah. 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 It's an action word. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I so, sure you know, I know, I know yeah. for a fact that I'm going to be around in 75 years, just sitting there waiting and waiting. I've, I've left this country like a told and we give a place before to wait for him to make me a father of the nation. He didn't do that. He start multiplying this. Becoming a nation. Becoming a... I mean, he was rich. He made himself God will. God had his back. And we were wrong. God wants God to tell you something. He's with you all the way. 
Amen. You may can't see them in the foreground. That's right. That's right. You may can't see them by the side. You may can't even see them behind you if you feel your back. But they're there. In your heart you, you know. You that. In your right. heart you, you know. Yeah. All the time. You can bank on that. He's there. Right. Amen. That's all our hope. We sing that song to Jesus. I can all hope be healed if we don't believe that he's with us. That he's going to do that that he told us in his promises. If he promised that to you, said, Lord, your word said, uh, you know, be like myself in you, and you shall give me the desires of my heart. Well, now, if you not get the desires of your heart, pretty much, nine, ten out of ten, the problem is what? Us. You not be like you not be like yourself in the Lord. It's us. Yeah. Yeah. You might be wrong, but you're not. Yeah, it's all right. Wrong with it's our own desires. Yeah. And see just where right. you are in the Lord, in your heart. That's and right. Your mind, and your your soul, mind. Then you will know why you're not getting what you're supposed to do. That's know. right. That's right. Constantly. Yeah, amen. It works the same for all right. of us. We don't got to yeah. be fooling ourselves. We know the truth is that we search ourselves and search. Search the Bible. Jesus says, search the scripture. Let's think of him. You search those scriptures and see where his commandments are. And then look over here in the New Testament again and see where it's going to talk about what a Christian, what a righteous man's lifestyle is supposed to be. Then you back your life, you set your lifestyle up beside that right, righteous man lifestyle is in the word of God and see where you stand. Mm -hmm. You know? Then you can go back home or wherever it is you go and say, uh, okay, I need I bet you be saying I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to do this, I need to do it over here, I need to do it I'm saying we all will have to. Because we all have sin and fell short of the glory of God. That's what it meant. We never we can never get to that righteous point where we got enough to do for no room to grow. That's right. We always got some eyes and dots and teams to grow. As long as mm -hmm. we stay in this place we body. We got some tests to go through still. We, we got some to do. Mm -hmm. I, I just know, received the word. Tonight, and the one song they sing that, oh, that Sunday morning, man. What was They talk about 50, 50, 50 offerings up, this, this money for that, this money for that, you know what I'm saying, but I'll have that, and then they got this one song before they go into the preaching, they just, we are coming, Jacob's flying, I mean, I don't want to go and take a lot of years before the Wood Dog family, but I don't know what I'm saying, there's just something wrong with this guy right here, you know what I'm saying, he's spending too much offering, offering time, you know. Anybody want to give to this? Anybody want to give to that? Anybody want to give to this? Anybody want to give to God? Huh? I didn't get you to go in. Yes, you could have. I knew you were up talking about it. You said you never had it. I say to you, bless the house. Bless the Lord, O house of men. Bless the house, O house of death. Bless the Lord, O house of death. Bless the Lord, O house of... Reserved. I mean, bless the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody, every house should praise the Lord. That is our mission. That's our commission. That's our commandment. You know, God is Lord, the King of Kings. You know, and yeah, and we we need to come in the house of the Lord, man, and be more ready to listen than to talk. Now I have a problem with that sometimes myself. Want this. The spirit moved on me good or something in my spirit, man, I just want somebody to know. Sometimes, sometimes you have to control that spirit, man. Let that spirit man rest in what you have been fed until it just well up in you like a well of water spring up there last night. Then there will be a time God will let you put it out there. But you gotta wait on that. You gotta wait on that. Sometimes as soon as we get it before we can get it good for ourselves, we're ready to give it to somebody else. I'll be here for that. I mean, you know, and that's one that we're reading. I'm like, I mean, I'm guilty. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes God gives you something that seems so wonderful and magnificent that you don't, somebody need to know that side of you. It do. But now ain't the time. You got to wait for God's timing. There's a time that's going to give to you. There's a time that's going to give to the next people that's going to be for you when the time is right. You know? When the time is right. We know they're going to be better than sacrifice. Well, I'm going to read. I want somebody, somebody to look up Psalm 126 for me. Psalm 126. Prayer 
prayers of a righteous man. Are you 122? Yeah, 126. Psalm 126. Can somebody read that fifth and sixth verse for me out loud? And we're going to close that book of prayer. What time do you have? I have 25 to 8. Yeah, 56. Anybody have it? Yeah. Read it out loud. Um, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. That means that when you're sowing, you might you may sow in tears. You may have enough time in the season that the thing you're asking the Lord for. You may be you through the valley of time or 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 long suffering. But you're sowing to him. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 But understand this. Hold your ground. Wait on the Lord. Don't move to your left or your right. Be patient. Head fast, I'm moving. Depending on God, looking at that, believing that whatever it is God said that He would do, He would do it. And believe me, you will come back precious seed. Doubtless, you will come again and rejoice, bringing in the sheep, testifying about how good God is, and announcing your prayers. Get my season. This is my season. But you got to believe. If God, you have been asking God for something, and it's been a long minute. Start claiming this is my season. This is my season. God is getting ready to do for me. I am getting ready to reap what I have sown. You know, but you have to have faith. He that cometh to the Lord must first believe that he is. And that he is a reward. Those that diligently, that's continuously, consistently, consistently seek him. And that do it with their whole heart. Want to know the things of God. Want to be in his workmanship. Want to be his child. He wanted. it. He's not only able, he's willing to do it. Why do you have faith in something that's more powerful than the other? I can have more faith in Yeah, like the second one I was saying, maybe I would have prayed to God about something. And the faith was there, all we there. I mean, it worked out and everything. Right. But when you pay something else, it seems like your faith ain't as, you know, powerful as it would be pray for other things. Well, somewhere along the line, well, that could be certain things. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that, first of all, doubt can be. That's the number one thing, believe me. And I'm going to tell you now, doubt can come from a lot of reasons. It could be something you've done and if the devil reminding you. Or you yourself could be reminding you. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It could be something that, you know what I'm saying, that could be too hard for you to comprehend right now. You know what I'm saying? Your faith might be up that level. And Jesus even said when he put the guy out there, out, out for, when he said to the man that the soul, the devil you know, and the disciples want to know why they couldn't do anything. He said, some things come by fasting and prayer. Amen. Some Not things why? you got to fast and pray about. You can have, listen, your only fast day ain't got to be, your only fast time is not got to be the end of the month when you're going to drink fast. Right. The only, I got a day of the week I fast any day. That don't got to be my only fast day. When I want something of the Lord, or you want something of the Lord, you want to hear from the Lord mightily and quicker than, you know what I'm saying, what you think you might be getting from what you're doing. But take out some time, Lord, for this one purpose here, I'm coming to you. Throwing away my plates, throwing away, you know what I'm saying? My TV, the phone, whatever it is, I, I want to hear from you, Lord. You know, let them know how much you want it. You know, you got the desire of this thing. You know, so God, God is God. He don't, He got what He needs. The only thing God ain't got that He wants is you. But He got you. Gotta say you're saved. But you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying that. Because it ain't his will that no man should perish, but all should have everlasting life. 
it's his will that not a creature he made, you know what I'm saying? He will come to heaven. But because sin, you know what I'm saying? See, sin offers something that I call the children of life, and I would know myself like more than, you know what I'm saying? Because they got so much stuff they can do that's against the faith of God. See, and sin is because for us, where he's saying, kill, steal, destroy. I mean, you know, that's what sin do. That's what the enemy do. But God came, he's love. He wants you to love everything from your heart. You know, he wants you to help one another. You know what I'm saying? Care for one another. You know what I'm saying? Number one, he wants you to love him and love all. But him first. You see, sin won't do that. Which is the things of the devil. They're not going to do that. Because sin, heaven, because hell, heaven, Lord, because man is like darkness, brother, the light. Hell, heaven, Lord, is sin. It's getting bigger by the day the road day to the damnation. Because man, brother, see like this world, I'm a young folk today, brother. I mean, you know, look at it from the time I was a young I guess you would know this too, brother Robin and sister. Uh, Jackie, I know you know too. When I was a youngster, on Sundays, if you didn't go to church, brother, you had to do it, but on Sunday, when you were in the garbage church, if you saw a preacher or anybody, that's of the house of the Lord. Whatever you're doing, if you're wrong, you've got to stop doing it. You know? Sometimes we'll see the preacher come, we're wrong, because we don't want to, <laughs> we don't want the preacher to stop talking to us because, you know what I'm saying, we don't want him to see us doing nothing wrong, you know what I'm saying? That's the house of him. And we couldn't lie to him, because we got our butt with the preacher and such thing, we lied to him. <laughs> when I was young and growing up, my goodness. I'm telling you the truth. I thought if you looked wrong, you were going to hell. Yeah, for real. I mean, they were just... now, now, these young people, man. They laugh at it. Right I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, they laugh at it. Smoke them, bring them, drink them. Right? I mean, they have no respect for nothing today. Sure. Mm. It's a respect that goes out the world pretty they much. They laugh at it. Sure. Yeah. They laugh at the store day on our day. And they think that's a joke. Yeah. But you see, the Bible says they like the days of Noah. You know, they all thought it was a joke until the day that Noah went into the ark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then all of a sudden, all the crying and hollering didn't mount to nothing mm -hmm. because it's too late to fade it down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I don't want that to happen to me. You. Mm -hmm. no. I don't think you. Anybody else got a They want to say <coughs> before we go into prayer? Mm -hmm. People are the young people nowadays, though. I need to tell you that. When you're praying, you might pray for shots over to you, the church, pray for her, uh, Bush told you about praying for him, and, and pray for his head. She's still in the hospital. They can't figure out what's wrong with her name. Okay. And the MRI, and the x-ray, and all that stuff. Are you showing up to There's just a remnant left nowadays. Uh, Young yeah. people have witnessed the apostate. They see church people that are going out there and doing the same things that non-church people are doing. You see, that's, that's, uh, that's the thing. And we their do. question is, is that real? Is Christianity real? We know it is. Oh, yes. But there's a lot of people in the churches pretending to be Christians. Yeah. And they don't know it's real. That's right. <laughs> that's right. You that's see, that's you young know, people's You know, that's witness. another one of the things that I find too, man, that sort of, sort of for me, man, is that, you know, preacher can stand up here and preach his eyes out every Sunday. But what he don't know, he cannot look to that congregation and say who's saved, who really loves the Lord, right. who's really trying to live right. Absolutely. He don't have that. He don't, don't right. He, he don't have that yeah. power. So right. like you said, that that power about a week later. Can you say that a moment come together? Exactly. And when I come, I'll separate the good from the bad. Only God knows. That's right. Amen. You know. Amen. Because if the power had that kind of I didn't know that if he had that kind of authority and power, yes. that he would do more of he would have some people to talk to certain people here, certain people. You know what I'm saying? To try to make this thing better and more righteous for God. 
but we don't do that. There's no way none of us here to sit back and try to congregate and say who we live and need some. You know what I'm saying? That's right. We all know we all need something, but we don't know if this righteous man say righteous, how righteous he can live. Because once we need freedom, separate one from the other. I know what nobody did. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So let us hope me and you that, you know, you've got to have this, that this zeal and desire to when Christ come again and he's coming, that you go back to him. Now, if you don't believe that he's coming again, you don't have a desire to go back with him, you may not be... You may not care about Dr. Mind because of Jesus because, first of all, there's a lack of understanding there already and a lack of faith. You better know he is coming again. You know, since that lady told me she don't believe in Jesus, you know, what I just go in one morning and look at her conference to have to go up to the other I can't tell you how to get it right there, but you know, you, what's in your heart? It's in your heart. You it's in effect. As long as you know, as long as you know, you're fine. <laughs> but that's the devil pushing you away. You shouldn't let it. As long as you know your faith, you're fine. Yeah. Always just say what Jesus has done for you. If that's you can't right. think of anything else, just say what Jesus has done for you. Your testimony. Mm -hmm. It's the word of God. Because it's the word that yeah. you come back to the Lord. That's why it's going to come back. So, because if you don't believe the word, there's nothing you can say to make a believe. Exactly. Let the word do its work. Let me go. So I didn't mind you away that Lord has to go. Give me a kind of way of putting you in a conversation or whatever. Yeah. 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 I think you should respect her position and just tell her, uh, I understand God gave you that choice whether to love him or hate him. Would you, would you mean everybody have a choice? You say, when you say on the do the wrong, you say, this day I put before you life and blessing. But I didn't tell her. Cursing, death and cursing. Mm -hmm. I told him I lost my son too, didn't he say? But then he come right back and he said, but you like, you're blessed. I told him I could go home. Just keep praying for him. Keep praying, man. I'll tell you, prayer will change things. Prayer can change things. Hard to solve. Because the person don't believe don't mean that they don't have a chance. That's right. Them the ones that God... She could be fighting. Them the ones that most likely, when they do help them come to the Lord and believe, Mm. They'll be more of a work in the house of the Lord than the one that they will believe will come. Right. Amen. Honestly. Right. 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 So you can't go by that. But you know, if you feel like you need to talk to them, by all means, then talk to them. The day is what? The, the tent? Yes. Yeah. North Africa. Pray that our church might have a place to meet. Bangladesh, Jack, Bangladesh. Pray that the few Christians among the Rohingya refugees will boldly share their faith. Just pray for, pray that the people in Bangladesh, Christians in Bangladesh, will share their faith boldly. Who take? Who? <laughs> Bhutan, Bhutan, B might be solid. B H U T A E. Just say Bhutan. I don't know what you're talking about. Pray that the young people will come to know Christ and receive sound discipleship and theological training. Nepal. Pray for the courage of church leaders and other believers who are in jail. Israel. Pray for Christians who are. Huh? Say, what me? Pray for Christians who respond to Muslim questions about Jesus. And I'll take Maldives. Pray that the new Maldivian and Christians will be protected as they share the gospel. And we, at the end, we pray for just say we pray for the whole entire nation to pray for the world. The whole world, man. Everybody needs to pray on Of course, we're going to pray for the Bahamas and the people in the prayer. We're going to 
pray for uh, all our souls. Uh, down here in um, Clay County, down there with the storm hit. Clayton. Uh, Clayton. Clayton? Clayton? No, uh, Clayton. 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 Clayton.